Hey there once again YouTube. Um, go check out my recent video if you have not already and the links in the description box below. And also right now is 627 p.m. Pacific Time, August 19th, 2019. Tomorrow, August 20th, 2019, I am going to go to Mount Rainier once again. This time at the su I'm going to take the Sunrise Rim Trail tomorrow morning. Hopefully that's going to be very fun. Hopefully it's not cloudy. I picked the nicest day that I could find. It's been pretty cloudy lately around that area, so... I'm hoping we'll get some good views of possibly uh, Mount Adams and Mount Rainier. Oh, of course, I like people to see Mount Rainier. Except sometimes low-level clouds can block the summit, even though you're right at the summit, basically. Here we are, pnsn.org. Please come here, and they have a Twitter post right down here. Now, this occurred. Check out what happened. The recent Tahoma Creek debris flow. I just recently found out about this yesterday, that on August 5th, Pacific Time, August 6th, UTC, uh, that there was a debris flow at Mount Rainier National Park, and it was caught on Seismic Station RER and other stations around Mount Rainier on its slopes. I'm going to create a blog post about this because I love the seismic signatures of this debris flow for Mount Rainier. So, why don't we go take a look at it on Twitter just real quick. don't know if you can see this very well, but it says, A debris flow occurred at Tahoma Creek on Monday, August 5th, 2019, on the southwest side of Mount Rainier National Park. The event occurred between approximately 6.48 p.m. and 7.58 p.m., originating from a sudden and significant change in the primary outlet stream from the terminus of the South Tahoma Glacier on Mount Rainier, which is an andesitic to desitic stratovolcano. This change caused a surge of water within the glacier and turned into a debris flow. Notice how it said on August 5th, 6.48 p.m. is right around the time it started. That is the time in Pacific time. Now, if it's UTC, that would be 148 UTC on August 6th. So, just putting that out there when I show you the seismic data, because it was detected on seismic stations across Mount Rainier and lasted almost an hour. Yeah, it was a pretty strong debris flow, guys. And, you know, they have happened, have happened before, excuse me, but it was pretty strong. Very interesting. The park's west side road and Tahoma Creek Trail sustained some damage. So, in consultation with the USGS Cascades Volcano Observatory, the park has temporary, temporarily closed the west side road. No damage is expected outside the park from this event. This debris flow may indicate that subsequent events may occur in the coming weeks or months. And guys, I went there on, what was it, August 16th, I believe? It was the 16th or the 17th? Or was it the 15th? Oh, man, I forgot the date that I went to Mount Rainier the first time. Uh, I think it was a few days ago on the 15th, I'm going to say, when I was there. I really didn't see any damage from the debris flow, but I pretty much crossed right over it. And I didn't even know it, you know. I didn't even know that that happened uh, like a week prior to me being there. So there are, definitely are some dangers when hiking at Mount Rainier. It is a volcano. It's got a lot of glaciers, you know. Always got to be careful and wary of certain things. Of course, it doesn't happen all the time. People hike there completely safe all the time, but it's always good to be safe, nevertheless. This debris flow may indicate that subsequent events may occur in the coming weeks or months. Debris flows are not uncommon during periods of hot weather in the park's dynamic landscape, said Tracy Swar Swartout, acting superintendent. Visitor and staff safety are our priority, so limited closures are appropriate at this time. Spark, park staff detected the event on Tuesday morning when the Tahoma Creek appeared extremely sediment-rich. Park geologists conducted aerial reconnaissance of this area Tuesday and identified the source and run-out areas. They also checked the South Tahoma Glacier for additional outburst geological hazards. All visitors and staff in the area were accounted for on Tuesday. That's good. So nobody died from this. It's possible people could have, but nobody died. Thank God. Glacial outburst floods and debris flows occur with some regularity in the rivers that drain glaciers within the park. A glacier outburst flood is a large, abrupt release of water from a glacier. Although the mechanism remains unknown, geologists report that stagnant and slow-moving ice on the lower part of the glacier combined excuse me, with faster-moving ice on the upper part of the glacier has been associated with such events. The Tahoma Creek Valley has had at least 32 outburst floods and debris flows since 1967. Wow. The park reminds all visitors to remain alert for changes in water levels and unusual sounds or shaking ground. 
In the event of rapidly rising water or a loud roaring sound coming from up valley, move quickly to higher ground at least 200 feet above the valley bottom. Visitors who may have witnessed this event on Monday are encouraged to report their observations to Scott Beeson. Wow, guys. So Mount Rainier had a good-sized debris flow just about a week prior to me visiting there, and I am going there tomorrow, so hopefully I'll stay all is calm. But I'm going to be on the northeast side near Sunrise Rim Trail, so it all should be good. But then again, I'm going to be on the slopes of an active stratovolcano. Woohoo! So that should be interesting. I absolutely love visiting volcanoes, guys. I mean, I mean, if one was erupting, really, I would visit it. I wouldn't bring my family, though, but I would visit it myself. I would. I'm that crazy about volcanoes that I would visit an erupting volcano. Now, the Tahoma Creek. Now, here we are. Oh, uh, whatever. Why, I don't know why it said that. Tahoma Creek right here. Let's see if I can zoom in. Okay. So, this is the location on Mount Rainier. Actually, I should zoom out just so you guys know where it's at. Here's Mount Rainier Stratovolcano right here in Washington State. And zooming in, we have Glacier Island right in this location right here. The location basically of where the debris flow started was right in this location, somewhere in this location right here, I believe. And this is Tahoma Creek going all the way down. And you can see this area has seen sufficient debris flows in the past. I mean, you can see part of this valley is completely cut out. Look at that. So it, it has seen some large debris flows in the past. This probably is not the largest, but it's definitely noteworthy. Just showing you guys the location of where this occurred. Now let's go look at some pictures, shall we? Right here you can see a bunch of water runoff and a bunch of debris coming down here. I'll show you the video in just a second from the National Park Service. Almost looks like a waterfall coming from right there. Coming from within a glacier. Going down. A lot of debris from this, guys. A lot of debris. Oh, you can see a debris flow right here. Zooming in. If it'll let me. Yeah, that's all debris that's falling, guys. Look at that. And some water, of course, as well. But basically like mud. Basically like, like a mudslide, basically. But, yeah. And it went all the way down to Homa Creek. All the way down. Let's see here. Oh, here's a good picture I wanted to show you guys. Right here, you can see, well, look at that. It was all the way to up here. And this is far down to Homa Creek, too. And all the way down to here. Usually, it's just this stream right here. But it, it expanded a lot. And let's see, where is it? Aha, here it is right here, National Park Service. Notice how high the water level got. About knee height, a little bit above your knee, depending on how tall you are. So... Yeah, definitely noteworthy, guys. Definitely noteworthy debris flow. Washed out a road, too. Very intriguing, guys. Very, very intriguing. Personally, I do not remember the last time Mount Rainier saw one of these. Of course, they probably have happened. In the, they, they've happened 37 times since, what, 1967 or something like that. So, we know they have happened before. But let's check this out. Here's a video of the debris flow. Let's see if I can't... Oh, it won't let me expand it. And this is basically right after the debris flow happened. They went out to do some aerial reconnaissance. Happening in that area right down there. Sorry about the lag, guys. You can see the debris flow all the way down here. Very laggy, my goodness. You see an active debris flow still occurring while they are recording. Not as big as when it originally happened, but... Look at that. Very crazy. PNSN did state that it was detected on seismic station RER, and I'm very well familiar with that station, so we're going to pull up the seismic data of this debris flow, and I'm definitely going to put out a post showing a lot more stations and the 
seismic data from those stations of this debris flow, just so that people know what it looks like. Very intriguing, guys. I really in enjoyed looking at this. Remember, it started at about August, at, at about, what, was, what did they say, 6.58? I think they said 6.58 p.m. Pacific time, August 5th, which would be around 1.58 UTC on August 6th. Here we are in the seismic program swarm. Notice this right up here that looks like a big spasmodic tremor event. This is the debris flow from Mount Rainier. Yes, let's zoom that in. Look how large it looks, guys. Look at that. Very large debris, debris flow, at least recorded from seismic stations. Zooming out. Let's try to get a full look at this debris flow. Mid to high range frequencies. No lower frequencies beneath about 1.5 hertz, which is what we should see with a debris flow. And right here, there's the debris flow from Mount Rainier that occurred on August 5th or August 6th, depending on what time zone you're using. Very interesting, guys. Look at that. Here's one of the bursts right here. Looks very similar to spasmodic tremor. A lot of characteristics of this are very similar to spasmodic tremor, but this is the debris flow. Look at that, guys. Very intriguing. Very, very intriguing. Zoom back out. Here's one last look at the debris flow. Pretty strong, guys. Pretty, pretty strong. Very interesting. That probably woke a lot of guys up. My goodness. There are probably a few people who did notice this, too. So, if you did see this occur, please let me know in the comment section below. I doubt I'll get anybody that saw this event actually happen, but you never know. Just want to put that out there. So, now that we're done with that, I want to move on to Hawaii, which has seen a good size increase in seismicity as of late. However, seismicity in the past 24 hours or so for Mauna Loa and Kilauea has been pretty low, actually. You'll see Pahala Hawaii, Pahala Hawaii, Pahala Hawaii, Pahala Hawaii. For people who follow my work, you'll know that I'm very familiar with Pahala Hawaii, because this is where spasmodic tremor occurs all the time. And look at these depths. And they're only reporting 24 earthquakes. There are a lot more than 24 earthquakes right now, but they're basically reporting all the ones 1.5 and above. There are ones that are occurring much smaller that they do not have on here. Uh, but Pahala Hawaii, Pahala Hawaii, and look at the depths. Between 30 to 45 kilometers in depth in this location right here, which we have signified. Remember, if you go to the description box below in links, you'll see it talks about what is Hawaii spasmodic tremor. And I'll show you some observations of mine and some proof showing how spasmodic tremor, which usually is reported in this area right down here, at depths the same as these earthquakes, usually it is showing mass magma transport along the magma plume conduit. I don't know to which volcano it's going to, but we definitely are seeing mass mag magma transport when seeing those spasmodic tremor events. However, we have not seen spasmodic tremor for a few days, and I was suspecting that all of these were spasmodic tremor before I looked at the seismic stations. Well, you're in for quite a shock. These are all earthquakes occurring within the magma plume conduit, guys. Right within the magma plume conduit, within the mantle. So, big swarm. Good size increase. I have not seen this really at all. Usually I just see spasmodic tremor in a few quakes. So, let's take a look at some seismic data real quick. Here we are at the monitoring map at volcanoes.usgs.gov. Now, I'll show the seismic data for TRAD in just a second, which in my opinion is the best station. Since these events are so deep, they're traveling very far, very quick, so we can use some of the distance stations to get a good look at these seismic events. Because for some reason, PPLD down here, past 24 hours, is, isn't very good at detecting earthquakes. I mean, I think the background tremor or the oceanic microseisms are just so strong that for some reason it drowns out a lot of the earthquakes. But as we go up to TRAD, past 24 hours, you will notice a huge slew of earthquakes. Look at all of those earthquakes, guys. We still are seeing a good amount of them as well. Let's go back. Let's go all the way up to PLAD, just so that you guys know that that's not surface events. Look at all those earthquakes, guys. And no, these are not occurring at Mauna Loa. They're occurring within the mantle plume conduit. Magma plume, mantle plume. Basically, same thing. Lots of earthquakes, guys. It has somewhat died down the past 12 hours or so, but could be starting to increase once again. I'm going to say maybe over 100 earthquakes of all sizes. Most of them, they have reported above magnitude 1.5, but let's take a look at Seismic Station TRAD in the HB network in the Seismic Program Swarm just real quick. 
The start of this data from TRAD is about 20 UTC on the 18th, which would be, I'm going to say, what is that, 2000? That would be about 1 p.m. Pacific time, August 18th, 2019. So about a day and a half or so. And we do see seismicity start to increase near Pahala, Hawaii, within the Mantle Plume Conduit at this time. Look at all of these events, guys. High rates frequencies for all of these events. Notice some of them occurring in rapid succession, some not. Look at all these guys. So many of them. Look at that. Even some really teeny tiny ones, but still a big increase. I have not seen this many earthquakes occur within the Mantle Plume Conduit ever. I mean, of course, it probably has happened before historically, but personally, from me monitoring Hawaii for the past two years, year and a half, two years, uh, yeah, I have not seen this. Very intriguing. Now, let's do something with the helicopter in just a second. What is this right down here? That is obviously not a seismic event. Yeah, that's weird. Okay, we still see more earthquakes, more earthquakes, more earthquakes. This one was from Kilauea, right here. This That one's from Kilauea. But yeah, we did see a big increase in seismicity, guys, for the Mantle Plume Conduit. Now let's go here to the heli quarter to X minutes 60 and 48 hours total. So it'll be 60 minutes per line, per seismogram, and 48 hours total in the whole heli quarter. Look at all those earthquakes, guys. Those are a lot of earthquakes. All right, let's try something else, shall we? Let's do 20 minutes per line. Whoops. Let's do 24 hours once again. Lots of quakes, guys. Lots. It has calmed down just a little bit, but... Again, why do you think this increase happened in the Manta Plume Conduit? Why do you think it happened? I think possibly more magma is rising up. Uplift still continues at the Mauna Loa Summit, the Kilauea Summit, and the Kilauea East Rift Zone. So all three of those reservoirs are being filled with magma as we speak. All three of them. I don't know if that's ever happened before, where all three reservoirs in that location have been filled at the same exact time. So I find that pretty intriguing, guys. That's That's got to be, I mean, for all three reservoirs to be filling at once, that's got to be a lot. And I'm talking about a lot of basaltic magma coming in. We did see a magnitude 3.3 in Montana. Let's out just real quick. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. A little more than an hour ago, as of me recording this, we did have a 3.3 at 5 kilometers in depth near Sealy Lake. I thought, when I first saw this, I thought this was going to be Manhattan, Montana. Again, I was like, oh, great. Another magnitude 4. But this was up near Sealy Lake, which is very strange, guys. I have not seen an earthquake occur up here in quite a while. This occurred about an hour ago, hour and a half ago. Only about three people reported feeling it. Some more felt reports may come in as time goes on, but we probably won't see that many for this earthquake. Let's take a look at it from the closest seismic station just real quick. Here we are with seismic station OVMT, which is the closest seismic station to this event. I'm not seeing any really any aftershocks at all or force shocks to this event. It's just the 3.3 and in my opinion looks much stronger than the magnitude 3.3, especially how strong it looked down there at Yellowstone on the seismic stations in Yellowstone. I'm thinking maybe a 3.5, maybe a 3.8 at the maximum. Definitely not a 4, but probably maybe kind of close to 1. Downwards going P wave, as we are seeing. But yeah, guys, very strong earthquake. Very, very strong. Maybe an aftershock right there, but that's pretty much it. We should see a few more felt reports coming in for this Sealy Lake earthquake, which again, I believe is a little larger than 3.3, but you never know. That's it for right now, guys. God bless, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Hopefully, I'm not trampled by a debris flow tomorrow at Mount Rainier. <laughs> Just kidding. That usually never happens. God bless, guys. See you later.